thank you for saving my life, man. You know, I don't always agree with what you say, but I believe there's a lot of truth in what you say at the same time. You really do not like women, do you? I love women, as long as uh, their breasts are in my face. Oh, my God, I love you right now. You just don't know how much I'm glad you put it out there. I love you. I have no complaints. She was wild and crazy. She wouldn't say no to anything. Like a guy. Yeah. 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 Tom, you know, for someone that's an atheist, you really do preach a good word. When you're alone, you wake up, you got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing, what she wants to do. My heart is getting so hard right now because your voice just makes me hot. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I have a huge crush on you. I oh, boy. I'm sexy and hot. Oh, my God, I'm in my car. I can't. I... <laughs> you're out of control. I know. Well, you make me out of control. But uh, anyway. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Right, I'm going I'm to take you out the certain style, Tom. Check this out. All right. Uh, I'm going to take you out Marilyn Monroe eating sleeping pills style. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I made that up for you, man. I could tell. Hey, uh, listen, I really got to disagree with you today. Uh, you know, this woman is getting divorced. Uh, she's going to have depression coming. The stomach staples are coming out. I think there can be a shortage of food in America. Yeah. Well, I guess if you live at Star Jones's house, you might be a shortage of food. Uh, I'm on my way to Costco right now. You know? <laughs> he has to be well endowed because if she's that big, you have to have well enough packages to, you know... Keep her happy, I would say. No, she didn't need the Yeah, but how could you possibly have that if you had to look at her naked? That's my point. Hey, darkness is a good thing. <laughs> now we try to give people the idea that the administrator is the secretary. So what, well, is that, what, what does that leave you doing? Well, I, I'm in a headhunting, you know, position, so it, it's completely different. I mean, there, there's a lot of... I'm in a headhunting position, too, but I don't think it's quite the same thing. No, no, it's not. Absolutely not. Tonight about 8, I'll be in a headhunting position. <laughs> oh, my God. What college are you attending? Uh, I wasn't attending college. I right, I know. Okay, you hold, were... on, hold on, let me explain myself before you... You were going to go. Bonham Young University. Yeah, pretty much. No, but, Right, uh, that was the college I, I you were was... going to, right? Yeah, actually, I started Bonham Young. Is that in Utah, Bonham Young? Yeah. Bonham Young like University. It. Yep. You knew what you did violated the rules of Lycus 101. Yeah. But you did it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea why I did. I mean, I was... because you're an idiot. Because you couldn't believe you were getting laid. And on top of that, ooh, how nasty is this? Your parents are Mormons. This is hot, hot, hot. That's why, right? <laughs> a little. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Yeah. You didn't put your hand over the fire. You sat right in the fireplace, son. You sat right on top of the logs. Your pants are on fire right now. Oh man, yeah. <clears throat> From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all, at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. 
People are streaming into our MySpace page today because we have a video of that author, Leslie Bennett, the woman who browbeats her, 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 her husband like a ball-busting bitch to get him to share the household chores. We've got video of her on our MySpace page. And I would say her appearance at this lectern speaks for itself. You've got to see it. So just go to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Finally, we have a legitimate MySpace page that's not by a fake. Uh, Dean and I work on this page together. Uh, you just go to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Or if you can't remember all of that, go to blowmeuptom.com. It'll take you right to the page. See this video. By all means. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Great. Uh, I was calling in because I've been listening to your show for a couple of days now, and it sounds as though you're kind of sad and pathetic. Well, give us some examples. I'm listening. Well, you always talk about how you have all this money and have a great radio show and how you're the happiest you could ever be. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me like you have a lot of anger and Sadness from either your Give family. me some examples. I'd like to hear the examples. Uh, well, the first is I can just kind of hear it in the way that you talk and your voice. So you don't have any specific examples? No, the specific examples is just because you don't have a specific example of why you're happy or why you're great until you use your money and your relationships to basically shield yourself from emotional pain. It's I see. And what would that emotional pain be all about? I think from the marriage Doctor. you had, the failed marriages, maybe things with your parents i'm not exactly sure uh, are you a doctor uh not yet but in a month i will be oh really what kind of doctor are you going to be a neurologist a what a neurologist you're going to be a neurologist what do you know about this and the answer is absolutely nothing what is this uh anybody's uh emotional makeup anybody's uh, psychology uh, you know nothing about that you're a neurologist that's what you're going to be uh, you're not going to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You're not going to be a licensed clinical social worker. Uh, you are going to be a brain surgeon. No, I'm not going to be a brain surgeon. I specialized also in psychology. And no, 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 no. But you're not going to be a psychologist, and you're not an expert in that field. That's actually the false. That's what I went to get my expertise in. Fine. Send us, send us a copy of your degree, and then we will be happy to let you analyze me. I'll be good. I'm in the. I'm in my car. No, no, right I now. don't. No, no, I don't need you to tell. Just send us. You can fax that in. Dean will give you our phone number. You fax us a copy of your psychology or psychiatry degree, and and at that point, because I am in therapy, I would love to uh, hear the opinion of a credentialed doctor uh, uh, telling me uh, about these things, but not you, because you're not an expert. That's not true. And the thing is, that then I send us your credentials. I will after we get off the phone. No, no, the no, no. You'll no, no. It's the, you got it backwards. First, you'll send us your credentials. Then you will analyze me. Not in the. No, we I don't do like it the other way. We don't do it the other way around. Uh, Dean, tell him how to send his credentials to us, and then when we receive them, we'll call him back and we will give him an opportunity to analyze me on the air. But uh, not a moment before. Who would go to a doctor and uh, have the doctor, uh, you say to the doctor, doctor, uh, where did you graduate from? And you would say to the doctor, the doctor would say to you, uh, well, tell you what, let me operate on you first, and then when I'm done, I'll show you my credentials. Ridiculous. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Payoyo, is that your name, Payoyo? Yes, sir. What's up, Tom? Not much. How are you? Well, I'm doing great, man. Uh, you're my hero, Tom. I, I love, love you, it. man. Thank hey, you. I just, I just wanted to comment on the, the um, on the police shootout in New York. Uh, they shot this man like over 50 times, right? I heard so, it was about 50. Yes. About 50 shots, man. I think that's overkill, don't you think? Well, of course it is. But ask any New Yorker, they will tell you how advanced they are over the rest of us, how cultured they are. Uh, yeah, you know, I understand, you know, they fear for their lives, and uh, they have every right uh, to fend for themselves, you know, to protect themselves. Uh, but uh, when they get trigger happy, then that's a different story. 
you know? Oh, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with you. The problem is uh, uh, these officers went before a jury, and the jury said not guilty. And that's because right. you know, as we went through the O.J. Simpson trial in Los Angeles, I you, know, that. you know the level of individual who actually sits for jury duty, and it's generally somebody in the lower IQ bracket. <laughs> somebody who's got nothing better to do with their time. I, I, I think uh, they should have had a jury decide. I mean, the judge didn't even have a jury decide. Was there no jury in this case? What was that? You're telling me there was no jury in this case? Yes, sir. No jury. The judge uh, acquitted them without a jury. That's That's outrageous. That's my my understanding. That's what uh, uh, KNX reported earlier. That that is outrageous. Why why was there no jury? uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. But... uh, you know, I don't have a problem with cops defending themselves and shooting, uh, you know, suspects or whatever. But, you know, when it's overkill, then you know, sometimes they go too far, man. Sometimes they do. Yeah. So I just want to make that comment, you know. Well, yeah. I don't disagree with what you're saying. And believe me, right. we've, got a lo- we've got a lot of police officers who are fans of this show. And most police officers are not like the ones in this story. They're just not. Wow. Uh, in this particular case, people are having a hard time making this a racial issue because uh, at least no, one of the and, officers and it shouldn't is black. Be a racial issue, Tom. It shouldn't be, you know. So I mean, that's that's just my point. I mean, you, you gotta you gotta somehow just defend yourself. But when it's overkill, then it's just gonna start up something. It could start up a riot, or it could start up something up there in New York. You know I, mean? I, I think it's outrageous that there was not a jury. <laughs> How could you not have a jury in a case like this? That's that's what they reported. That's what I no, heard. No, I believe you. And, <laughs> in fact, I'm seeing a story here. It says here in a statement, Mayor Michael Bloomberg said there were no winners. And he also said that, uh, you know, that uh, New Yorkers need to accept the judge's authority, even though they may disagree with his decision. Right, right. What is the judge doing making a decision? This isn't this isn't the people's court. This is ridiculous. Uh, yes, yes, yes it is, but you know, uh I don't know, I just wanted to talk to you, you know. I just you know, wanna talk talk about uh, that story and well, I just wanna, I'm glad, I also I'm wanna glad say you that you're it. my hero, Tom. Well thank you for that, you're I appreciate hero. it. I love your show, I've been using it for about a year. Uh first time caller. I'm glad so you I called. You, Tom. I was wondering, can you take me out uh Mexican style? Mexican style, I certainly can. one 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. Tom likes it. I'm from Mexico, and uh, this is pretty much the best show I have ever heard in my life. My English is not that good, but with your show, I learned a lot of English. Oh, so tell us some of the English phrases you learned here. Um, Tom, the bitch. <laughs> and, uh, pretty much just phrases like that. It's the Tom Like It Show. It's the Tom Like It Show. I know the telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Father, how are you? Doing great. You know, I have a little bit of a situation. I want to see what you think about it. Ready? I am. Uh, I was coming back from, uh, I travel a lot for work, so I was on a plane. I talked to this girl for about 10 minutes before landing, and I give her my number, right? So we start talking. She's from Texas. I live here in L.A. And uh, we start talking, and uh, it's been three weeks now, emails, all, all this crap, right? She invited me to go uh, in Denver. She's going to be there for a wedding, right? And, okay. Um, and uh, I said, well, let me see what my schedule is. I'll let you know. So I put, you know, a few numbers together, and it's going to cost me for two days. It's going to cost me almost $1,000. So I don't think it's worth it, right? So, and I told her, I said, listen, it's a little bit expensive for me now. You know, I'm strapped on cash. She goes, well, I'll tell you what. She goes, I got my own room. I rent a car, you know, so we can share the room. 
And I got the car, so don't worry about it. You just got to pay for your ticket, which is 200 bucks. Now, she goes, my husband pays for everything. <laughs> <laughs> is that so? But, but she's, you know, she's like, we're like roommates. We don't really, you know, the past six months, our relationship has been a little shaky. They got two kids, you know, two boys. And uh, that's my luck. Lately, I've been hooking up with all these uh, girls that they, are married, right? And uh, he's an FBI agent, right? Oh, that's, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, my the, the previous one, he was, uh, check this out, the previous girl that I was going out with, and uh, he was a Navy SEAL sniper, dude. He went to Iraq three times. So I don't feel, you know, too good about this crap. Uh, they're divorcing. You know what I mean? So they're not yeah. together. <laughs> okay. Well, she's offering to pay. Well, he's offering to pay for her. Because he thinks, she told me that by just giving her space, things are going to be better when she comes back. You know, because they've been fighting a lot, a lot of tension. Uh, yeah, but when a woman asks a man for space, what she's saying is it, she's I talking about the another. space, but she wants a man to fill the space between her legs. Yeah, yeah. She wants another penis, and that's what I got right here. So, that's right. Yeah. and So um, it sounds to me like that's what she's offering up. Yeah, yeah, even though, like you always say, of course, you know, if you tell him, you know, I'm going to see him bang you, she's going she's gonna to say, oh, no, I don't do that, of course, right? Oh, she's going to so, say that, but come on, yeah. she has she has a room, one room, the two of you are going to stay in the same room? She's going to, her, her husband hooked it up, he's going to put it at the Marriott in Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> and I uh, checked that out, it's $250 a night. It's re it's like, it's real nice. It's not in Boulder. Nice. It might be one of the better hotels. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. So it's real I nice, do. you know. And uh, I mean, two hundred bucks. You think it's worth it, dude? <laughs> but again, when I go out here in uh, in Sunset, two hundred bucks is one night for me. Right. It's not, you know. So I'm thinking two hundred bucks. I'm gonna say maybe pay, you know, one dinner. Come on, I'm at least I know what you said about the forty dollars, but wait, wait. If on. you're going to a wait, if you're going to a wedding, I assume that means you're also no, going no, to no, a reception. No. Well, wait, I'm not going to the wedding because the wedding uh -huh. is such a small wedding. She's going to the reception for a few hours by herself, and then basically, okay, this is the deal. I'm going there on Thursday afternoon. She's gonna fly there Thursday afternoon, right? And uh, on Friday. Afternoon, we're going to spend the night together, and then Friday morning, she's going to go to church for a few hours, and that's it. She's done with the wedding. And then Saturday morning, she's going to fly back to her husband. And you are, hey, hey, we I'm can't sorry, say sorry. that word on the air. <laughs> you know, I, I can't care less about weddings. I don't like them to begin with. No, I don't blame, I don't like them either. But uh, yeah. so that's you go reason. there, you stay in the hotel room, maybe you have dinner with her. You're in the same room where a husband has put the two of you up. Yeah, no. The husband does the husband know he's put the two of you up? Of course not. No. <laughs> no. So it sounds to me like you're being made an offer here. But let me ask you this: Do you believe in karma? Well, I, again, I don't render moral judgments on this program. Uh, yeah. I don't believe in karma. I'm more pragmatic. If I think somebody might come and get me, yeah, then I avoid this kind of behavior. But who knows? If you think you can do this without, without, and by the way, the husband knows where she's staying. You have to remember that. Yeah, exactly. Which means he can arrive at any time. Oh, I didn't think about that. Right. So you're thinking my shop there, the FBI. Agent. I'm not. I don't know whether he would. I just know that he can. Oh, he might. You never know. To surprise her, you know what I mean. To be nice. Well, uh, you know what might be smart on your part would be to get another room and tell her to come see you. But then you know the way I, I'm thinking. That, okay, if I spend money for yeah, here, you know, here's the way I'm thinking. Just so you understand how I think. Okay. I think to myself, if I can't get laid in Southern California, if I have to fly to Boulder, Colorado to get laid, yeah. my game needs uh, an overhaul. I know. Yeah, I agree with you. That's what I'm saying. Maybe your husband ought to give her some space uh, to fly out to California for a few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, I, we're talking to lay here, no problem. You know, I got an accent. You know, I'm from Italy. Blah blah blah. I got everything going. So, so I'm really, what really depends that. on here is what it really depends on here is is she that hot? Oh, uh, she's 33. She's you know she she looks good, but she's hot. Drop that gorgeous. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, you know, if Selma Hayek decides she wants to take a night off from her boyfriend and tells me to come to Boulder, Colorado. I will pay her before having you for her. I'm on the next play, okay? Exactly. <laughs> but if uh, Sarah Jessica Parker invites me to her hotel room in Boulder, but what am I doing? Yeah. I hate to turn down my China dude. I know, but, uh, you know, again, uh, you have to look at the cost-benefit analysis. Well, I'm thinking those $200 can go. Actually, it's gonna, I know when the, the, the game is, you know, when it's over, it's going to be more like on the 350 400 And you are running the risk that he's going to show up. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying it's like uh, most likely not, huh? I see what you're well, saying. Well, I'm just saying it's risky. Yeah. It's expensive. I could invest those money and get a couple of girls over here, right? Yeah. Well, well, that's exactly right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. I like to travel. I like to go see Denver, but maybe so. <laughs> I like ready to go with a couple of guys, friends of mine, have fun over there, then maybe a chick there. What if she's boring? You know what I mean? They well, you be... know, if you're going to go to Denver, why don't you fly there and see the Lakers? Oh, they're going to be there, huh? That's a good Yes! Idea. There you go, there you go. Maybe I get her husband to pay for that, too. That's right. Or maybe what you do is go see the Lakers and tell her, hey, if you're uh, coming into Denver tonight, I have a hotel room in Denver where I've gone with my friends to see the Lakers. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's that that gets her out of the hotel room. It gets her away from where the husband knows she is. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if you uh, if 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 you told to just take a cab down here, I'll be waiting for you. You're right. Well, I'm not even going to ask you about the next one, which is going to be uh, at the end of June, dude. Actually, I got one in May. I met this girl. She wants me to go to New York in May to meet her. I mean, you didn't meet her on. Up... What's that? Did you meet her on the internet? Uh, I mean, this, I met this girl on, uh, on a fly. I fly a lot for work, and I meet all these chicks. I, you know, I talk a lot, and uh, you know, I got them all. But then they invite me to go see them. Dude. It gets expensive. Yeah, and, uh, I understand. Are those uh, tax deductible? You think? Well, I don't know what kind of business you're in, but certainly <laughs> going to New York to bone someone, I don't think is uh, included in the deal. There is, is, but John is not tax deductible, huh? Okay. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> but, uh, hey, at least you're in the game, which is good, Mike. That's good stuff. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alex of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I got a question for you. And, uh, you know, you're, I know you're all about financial stuff, and uh, you're the only one I really trust to give me an honest opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. My buddy's, like, uh, about this, um, was in my ear about this uh, cash giving thing. Some guy got him in. The guy just bought a Corvette. The guy that got him in is doing a hundred grand a month. You know, all you got to do is, you know, give me this much to buy yourself in. Then you go get someone else, and and they buy in. And I mean, what do you know about this stuff? Um, I think they're generally a scam. Now, the fact that you're asking a question about it means you believe it's a scam. Uh, well, yeah, you know, but my buddy's like, oh, the guy got FedEx uh, uh, envelopes to cash in them. He's just he bought a. Yeah, but this is what's known as a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid sales. Yeah, like it's like, illegal. Uh, based on what you're telling me, I think it's one of those schemes. It's illegal. The idea is people make their money by getting other people in on the scheme. Yeah, it's called uh, cash giving. That's what he said. Right, cash giving. Yeah, like um, you know, okay, like he gave the guy thirty five hundred, right? Now he has to go and find someone to give him thirty five. That's called pyramid sales, a Ponzi scheme. It's illegal because eventually somebody's not getting any money out of the deal. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, well, wait a minute. Then that means I have to go out and get someone's money and give it to you, and that person has to go out and get somebody's money and give it to me. You know, and I'm like, it's well, illegal. Yeah, you and know. you could lose all your money. 
Yeah, okay, cool. I, I, I knew you'd give it to me straight. And then uh, one more question. Did you ever find a, a, a take-me-out dime bag style? Did we ever find a dime bag style? I know we talked about it. No, nope, I don't think we have one because uh, it, it's rarely asked for, but uh, it is duly noted. I thank you for the call. Tom Like 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Like I'm a long time listener. My dad listens to you. My brother listens to you. Actually, my whole family of men listen in at 3 p.m. It's the Tom Like Show. Tom like his show at one 800 800 tom Anything goes here, let's go. 1-800-5800-TOM. Cinco de Mayo, our broadcast from Camacho's, will be, for a change, on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> this year, Cinco de Mayo is on a Monday. And we are breaking with tradition, and we are actually going to do the uh, broadcast on a Monday from Camacho's. And uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, we have uh, enjoyed our affiliation with Camacho's. We've enjoyed this event. It is the wildest public event we now do. The wildest. Doors will open about 2 o'clock on Monday, May 5th. The show will begin at 3 p.m. local time. On Monday, May 5th at Camacho's. And uh, Camacho's is easy to find. You take the 60 freeway to the uh, uh, the city of industry. Get over the Crossroads Parkway exit. And Camacho's, of course, is on the south side of the 60 freeway. This is a very exciting day for all of us. And uh, we want you to be there. So hopefully you will be there. It's Camacho's, city of industry. 60 freeway at Crossroads Parkway. And you can call Camachos for details at 562-695-5777. We don't do a lot of broadcasts these days in public. We, we we pretty much have uh, limited ourselves down to the studio, but we would never miss Cinco de Mayo at Camachos. There's just no way. So uh, everyone asks me, are we doing Camachos this year? Yes, we are. Monday, May 5th, show begins at 3, big wild crowd Bring plenty of hot chicks, throw some into the pool, then maybe you get some out of the pool. That's how it works. Call Camachos for details, 562-695-5777, and see one of our rare live broadcasts. I can't wait. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo at Camachos, okay? Now you know. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Javier on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Javier. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going um, great. I was, I was just calling because uh, about it, two years ago, I won an online poker tournament and won $124,000. Um, my parents were into real estate. What they do is they build houses and sell them for a living. And this was when the market was hot. And so my parents told me, you know, this is a good way to start. You came up on a good amount of money. Let's put it in on a house. We put it in on a house. My parents went equally on it. Um, and now that the market, ex like you said, exploded, like the, how no one's buying anything, I have $124,000 in there, and so does my parents. They have about a hundred grand in there, too, that's kind of just sitting there. And it's been in the market for about a year already, and we're having a tough time, you know, getting it through this because it's so much money just sitting there. Well, that was a very bad idea. Uh, by you yeah. and your parents. Uh -huh. And uh, why are you selling the house? Are you living in the house? No, no, we're not living in the house, but we just, we build houses and sell them for... Well, maybe you, ought to, maybe you ought to live there. Right. But the thing about it is right now is that we, we have someone currently renting in it. Now, three grand income on that, but my dad's retired and my mom's working and... It's just, it's just, we need more money to come in. We, we really want to just sell that house, you know. Yeah, you know I know what you, I know what you want, but you made a bad investment, mm -hmm. and at least you're getting income. Right. Thirty-six thousand dollars a year in income. Now, of course, you have expenses, so that's not uh, profit. That's thirty-six thousand a year in income. But thirty-six thousand, you, you spent two hundred twenty-four thousand dollars 
uh, building a house and buying the property. Uh, that included mm-hmm. buying the, the land, right? Yeah, that included the land, too. Okay. So $224,000, uh, my goodness, that's a good probably 15% return. Yeah, but the thing is it's split in two because it's me and my parents, so it's really only 1500 yeah, no, but it's No, but it's still the same return regardless of how you split it. Right. Right. You, If you put the money in the bank, you wouldn't get a 15% return. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Right. So, yeah, I understand. So what do you what do you think we should do till the meantime until the market gets bigger? Do you think we should just keep renting it? And yes, then... if you have a renter paying that kind of rent on a house uh, that you paid that price for, keep going. What's the right. rush? Right. Well, the thing is my mom's also in in the in the construction business and how how it is is if we have one bad month, it's kind of is it's going to be a bad news because that that income from the house and then my mom's income it's pretty much keeping us even right now. So if my mom fails a little bit, just hits a little less than gold, that could be critical for us. Why is that? Because we have so much money on the house, and the the house that we have is pretty much paying for our house that we live in now. And then the, my mom's income pays for about all our living expenses, insurance, food, all that. But stuff. you understand the, 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 the return you're getting is larger than the return you would get if you put the money in the bank. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I don't know how much your property taxes are. I don't know how much your insurance is. I mean, how much do you end up with out of $36,000? How much do you end up with at the end of a year? Um, well, we just started renting the house about uh, not even a month. Well, we gave him the key tomorrow, so he's going to start renting. The only thing he's paid off so far is the first and last month. Well, why didn't you and your mom move into the house? Well, because we have a nicer house in Simi Valley. You know, it, I understand all this, but first of all, you know, the, there's no easy way out of a bad investment. Mm-hmm. You understand? Uh, yeah. This was a bad investment, and people who know better would not have made that investment. Right. So now that you're in it, uh, if you're getting that kind of return, you're better off living with it for a while until the market recovers. I owned a house for 13 years before the market recovered. Right. Because I bought the house at the peak of the market, which is what you did. Right. So, well, the thing about it is, do you think you think it's going to be another decade till the market comes back up? Well, um, in in Los Angeles, uh, in the Los Angeles area, uh, the market uh, began to crater around 1990, and it stayed cratered until 1997. That's seven years there. Right. Okay. It could be a well, very you, long time. It's one of the biggest bubbles in history. Right. Yeah, I understand. The market was hot, and I just played it too late, I think. Well, you played it way too late. And, right. uh, I mean, you have the option of selling at a loss. You can do that. Uh, yeah, I know. All right, Tom. Well, can you take me out uh, JFK style, please? Senior or junior? Um, Senior, please. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, John. I Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay. Man, it's good to hear. Hey, I got a question for you, real quick. The uh, the short of the long the short story of the long part is uh, I came across a bunch of money, a good sum of money, and uh, now it, it's it turns out to be a pretty good chunk every year for the next twenty years. My question to you is, with the I'm, I'm trying to think of where to invest it, because I don't want to go out and blow it. I want to invest it. Uh, with the market the way it is right now, both the stock market and then the uh, the real estate, I've been tossing up ideas, and I just can't come to a conclusion uh, one way or another. How much money are we talking about here? A year? It's about uh, six and a half a year. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I, first of all, I recommend you hire a professional. Don't try to do this yourself. Okay. Uh, if, look on the Internet and find certified financial planners or CFPs. Okay. They uh, have taken an exam. They have a license. Uh, they are not licensed by the state, so they have a professional organization. All right. And it's, uh, I would not go with the first one you meet. I'd interview two, three, or four of them, see who you feel comfortable with, and then find out what their fees are. 
Make sure that whoever you hire is not in the business of selling insurance or banking services or stocks. Okay, because I've already I went ahead and my um, I went ahead and I, I paid for like I, I put a, a trust fund together for my daughter. And granted, she's only 18 months, but I mean, I put one together so I can start, you know, for her future and stuff like that. So I've already been spending a little bit uh, here and there, but it's nothing that a lot of people would have done. Um, but I just wanted to know, like, you know, should do you think the real estate would be something to invest in like that? Because I, if I if I do, well, do real estate, I was thinking about doing it like, you know, go big. But you don't know anything about it. Well, I mean, the, yeah, you're right. You know, I, I don't really know too much about it. My parents. No, no, were, you don't know anything about it. Yeah, but you don't know it. Your parents may know what something about it, but you don't. Right. And and for the first thing you do in a situation like this is you make sure you have zero debt. Yeah, see, I just, I'm just about to pay that off too. Actually, that's your first investment. Yeah, that I already means, got that check written out. Yeah. That means all credit cards, all loans, everything yep. zero. That's your first investment. That's I mean, how much how down. much debt do you have? Uh, I think it was like what seventy five hundred dollars in student fees or student loans. Student loans. And what yeah. about credit cards? Uh, credit card was like I think debt was two hundred dollars. I think. Car loans. Uh, nothing. I paid that off. So, and so I, paid that off. I had it off before. I, I paid it off right. with the uh, with my. So with when my, you uh, write this check, you will owe nothing to anybody. You will know nothing. Just about, yeah. Not just about. I mean nothing. Well, with the, with the student loans and everything else, that's about it. You would pay that too. Yeah, yeah. First off, that's what I've already got down. Okay, so wait. Once you pay, you once you pay, you will owe zero. Correct. Correct. And free and right. clear. Step two. Do you have a four hundred one k and an IRA? Uh, I have a four hundred one k to my old to my old job. Well, Time to start job, a Roth IRA. Um, no, I don't have anything IRA. Well, you need to have one. Uh, you need to have a Roth IRA, and you need to. Uh, you say you have a four hundred one k from an old job. What about your current job? Well, my. Uh, well, I'm sorry. The old job was when I was in the military, and then uh, that just rolled over from the from the military to my most recent job that I'm and, that I and, have right now. And and you're working there now, and you have a four hundred one k, and you're contributing to that now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, about the maximum. A yeah, it's about two hundred a month. No, no, two hundred a month is not the maximum. Okay, well then, yeah. If you have six and a half million dollars or six million dollars a year. Well, I, uh, just, you, I just got the check today, so fine. So I'm telling you what to do. You wanted it. You asking me? I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You you want to uh, uh, to bolster that to the maximum amount allowable. Okay. And and the maximum amount allowable, if I recall correctly, is about fifteen thousand five hundred dollars a year. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's how much you should be putting in. Okay, so just uh, just keep the four hundred one k. Don't invest. In no, no, special. I didn't tell you. I'm saying these are the first things to do. Okay, all right. Before you go start looking for investments and st looking to go big in a business you know nothing about, do the sensible things first. Right, right. I've already got. Like I said, I've already got that. Uh, Check written out for the student loans and right. for every other debt, debt that I had. By the way, um, is the amount uh, you're getting uh, after taxes? That's uh, yeah, it's, it's about that. I think I already figured that out because that was the check. That was the total check that I got uh, yesterday. So, what, did they take taxes? Yeah, they've already took it out. They did. All right. Do you have an accountant? Um, yeah, but not official. I'm very, I, I don't mean H&R so Block, I, I, and I love H&R Block, but uh, when you're talking $6 million, you need a specialist. Do you have an accountant? No. You need to hire one. Not a, not a formal one. What is it, like uh, Merrill Lynch or something like that? Some... No, no, no. The, the Merrill Lynch oh. has stockbrokers. Okay, you yeah, need... okay. All right. An accounting firm. All righty. All right. Uh, you see... Uh, you're all worried about playing it like you're in Las Vegas now at the casino. <laughs> I'm all about trying to clean up your life and make sure that all the basics are taken care of. That's what you need to worry about first. The Tom Likas Show.